Hello, everyone, and welcome to a, another webinar brought to you by Meta Broward and the Broward Public Library Foundation. My name is Robert Alness. I am the Director of Philanthropy for the Broward Public Library Foundation. And we are very excited today to be bringing you what I think will be another great topic. So just to give you a quick um, recap on who we are, Meta Broward is a young professionals group. Uh, it's the newest initiative of the Broward Public Library Foundation. And we are really focused on providing our members uh, an elevated experience. It's more than just networking. It's more than just getting drinks and talking to people. There's always an educational component. There's always a piece that lends itself to further development, whether that's personal, professional, or whatever, whatever the goal is for our individual members, we always look to, to make that happen. Now, the Broward Public Library Foundation is our umbrella organization really above uh, the initiative and we are dedicated to enhancing the programs and services of the Broward County Library as a whole. So the fundraising we do and everything we aim to accomplish is always looking at promoting and growing the library services. Um, all right, well without further ado, I am very happy to to welcome uh, Marissa McKenna today. Uh, she is the networking chair for the Meta Broward Committee. She is also the owner operator of Aroma Joe's, a really excellent coffee shop on Powerline here in Fort Lauderdale. Um, and she is doing a, a webinar today titled Small Business Coping with COVID-19. Um, and I'll let her get into all the nitty gritty details and tell you about herself. Marissa? Hi everyone, my name's Marissa. Like Robert said, um, I am the owner operator and franchisee of the Aroma Joe's Coffee. Um, I am the networking chair of Meta Broward, and it's been such a pleasure being a part of a young professionals group in Fort Lauderdale. And, you know, we, we just love being a part of the community and teaching people about growth as a young professional. And it's been, you know, a great couple months starting off the group, and we're always looking for new members. And, of course, it's a tough time right now, but we would love to still chat with you about the growth of Meta Broward and if you want to be involved. And we have a lot of things that we do to cope during these times, like these seminars or challenges, reading challenges that we'll actually be talking about later in the seminar. But, um, you know, as a networking chair, my idea to grow Meta Broward is to be more involved in the community and create these awesome events that, you know, provide outreach to young professionals and we can really grow as a group together. And now, nowadays, young professionals is how we're going to all grow. So today I am a young professional talking about a small business coping method and I will be... All right, coping with COVID-19 as a small business, Aroma Joe's Coffee. As you can see kind of in the background, that's my cute little coffee shop. And unfortunately, it doesn't look all that full right now because of the tough times. But, you know, fingers crossed that, that everything, you know, will start going back to normal. But um, today, I just would love to talk to everyone about how, as a small business, we're coping with things. And maybe it can help you with wherever you're working or, you know, in a family business like my myself. So I will be diving into kind of the internal aspects of Aroma Joe's and ways that we've coped with things and strategies we've come to learn over the past couple months and a little bit about the company. So Aroma Joe's is the best coffee shop ever. Um, but you know, I'm just a little biased because it, I, you know, I'm a part of it and I've always been a part of it. But for those who don't know about Aroma Joe's, we are a coffee concept from New England. Go Patriots. Sorry if that hurt anyone's feelings. Um, but we, you know, the company was founded in 2000, which seems like forever ago, but you know, it's such, it's still such a growing company and you know, it's, it's competitors up in the Northeast. We've really put under pressure because our company has grown so much. And 
it, it's really cool because it was founded by four cousins from Maine, just looking to create that wicked good cup of coffee and a great atmosphere. And wicked good is a term from New England. I know it sounds crazy, but that's the motto Aroma Joe's always had for, for so long until we grew out of the New England market. Then we kind of had to go away from that, but everyone still says it's a wicked good cup of coffee. And it was always an atmosphere where you would come up to the drive through no intercoms, no attitude. And, um, you know, you would just get to know the barista and they would know your coffee. They would learn about your family. And that's what the four founders wanted to create this company around is, is positive people. So they actually built the first Aroma Joe's in Rochester, New Hampshire, which is crazy to think about because it was only 96 square feet. That fits about two people in it, not even. Sometimes it's only one person. And they were just, the four of the four founders were working 17-hour days just slinging coffee out of the drive-thru. And that's how they created such a familiar base and um, community is that they were there every day and it's still operating today. Uh, I don't know how long it will be operating because the company has grown a lot and I'm sure they need to expand, but it is, you know, adorable little coffee shop and to the community, it's been there for 20 years this July. So it's, it's definitely a statement piece in Rochester. The Four Cousins made Aroma Joe's a unique place to get coffee, tea, or breakfast with adding endless flavors. So the cool thing about Aroma Joe's is you can kind of create whatever you feel like. You know, the barista is there to help you and get to know your taste profile or what you're feeling for breakfast. And that's the cool thing that, you know, not a lot of customers realize. Sometimes it looks overwhelming, but you know, just talk to the barista and figure out, you know, what you like. And, you know, it's not always about coffee. I know we are a coffee brand, but we just have endless amounts of drinks and opportunity you can do to find something. So the founders built Aroma Joe's 18 stores they built with just the founders themselves. And that was in 2000. And they built that over 15 years. Then they were approached to franchise and that was that was really an awesome experience for them because this was just four guys trying to make a living and creating a business that they thought would be fun and just entertaining and something that people would love. And once they started growing those 18 stores, they realized that this brand is you know, beyond what they thought it would be. So when they were approached about franchising, it was kind of an easy answer. And then, you know, fast forward 2015 and now, and we have 70 stores open today. And it's, it's crazy that the business has grown that much. And, you know, to 70 store, 70 stores to the founders probably doesn't seem like a lot in the grand scheme of franchising, but for four guys that just wanted to have some fun and create a concept that New Englanders would love, you know, 70 stores is a huge accomplishment. So, you know, hats off to them for the company they've created and are still creating because, you know, in the next couple of years, I think their goal is 300 stores. So for four founders to look back and say, hey, you know, we started with just one coffee shop and you know, now it's 2025 and we have over 200 stores. It's, it's a great franchise to get involved in. And I'll be talking about, you know, how to possibly get into franchising and what my role is in the franchising world down here after we talk about kind of how we cope with what's going on in the epidemic right now. But that's a little bit about Aroma Joe's and a little bit of the background. And I will be talking about the founders a little bit. I know I just talked about the company and a little bit how they started, but you know, I would be doing justice if I didn't speak about the four founders because they're the ones who created the company and they're the ones who are helping us cope with the COVID right now because they're, they as a brand have created such a strong um, team that now it helps all franchisees cope with things that might go wrong. So 
you know, if you're a part of a franchise right now, lean on the people above you that, you know, are one step ahead of the game. So here are the founders. This is actually the Aroma Joe's in Rochester, New Hampshire, the 96 square feet building. And it's in a little plaza that you can see in the back. But it was two sets of cousins, and the first is Tim McKenna, and then his brother, Marty McKenna. Mike Sillen and Brian Sillen are both brothers. So, you know, a little bit of background about them is Tim, they all four grew up in New England, and they were through and through Duncan kids. You know, New England is known to be the Duncan world. And so, you know, that's all they kind of really knew growing up. But Tim and Marty ended up moving to the West Coast with their parents as kids. And in the West Coast, they just learned that there's so much more than Duncan. And there was a whole nother world of coffee and espresso and, and great atmosphere and um, great customer service that they had never really seen in New England and Mike and Brian stayed in New England and they Mike went down the construction path and Brian went down the customer service path with Disney and bartending in Boston and meanwhile Tim and Marty were doing other entrepreneurial stuff in the west coast but Marty actually is he goes way back with coffee. Um, so he was the first one that was a pro he actually approached a coffee concept in the West coast and called Dutch brothers. And he ended up going to the founders of Dutch brothers and loving their concept. They had two stores at the time. This was 1990, I'd say 1994. And they had two stores and he had asked them if they were wanting to franchise. And at the time, you know, with two stores, they weren't thinking about franchising. They were just thinking about opening and operating their stores. But Marty said, you know, okay, if you don't want to franchise, I will, how about I build a Dutch Brothers and let me show you guys how profitable my store can be. So, you know, handshake back in the day meant, all right, let's, you know, let's see how, how this goes. So he opened a Dutch Brothers and he, his profits from his store were double their two stores. So immediately the, you know, the founders shook hands, partnered with him and said, all right, let's grow the business. So Marty's store was really successful, but in the end, he always wanted to go back to New England and be where he grew up. So he ended up selling off his shares of Dutch Brothers and going to Tim, who at the time was doing construction and said, hey, I have a building. Um, do you want to go back to New England and make our own coffee concept? So Tim was all for it. He always wanted to go back home as well. And he always loved coffee. And then they took the Dutch Brothers and put it on a trailer and drove it cross country. They remodeled it. And then they dug it under the, in Rochester and plopped it in there. And it was, the rest was history. So how Mike and Brian got involved was when they went back to New England they had reached out to Mike because in construction, you know, that is very vital in building a business. So Mike was all for it. Brian was a bartender in at the Boston Harbor Hotel, which is a very, very high end uh, hotel in Boston. And it's, you know, one of the most, I guess, iconic hotels. And Brian, you know, it took him a little bit to get on board, but he brought so many skills to the table because of the mixology background and the flavor profile background. And so all four of them had such unique roles and they all brought it together to build this coffee concept. And they're all four partners still today. They all, they, some of them have, you know, kids still involved. Some of them, um, 
you know, do other things, but I will be talking about, about a little bit about how my connection with the founders are and how I came involved with Aroma Joe's. It's a lot, it's a little bit familiar because I've known the company for a really long time and I might look like one of the founders. So that's, that's how I kind of got involved, but I will be talking about that shortly. So Aroma Joe's, Pompano Beach, how did a little 96 square foot coffee shop from Rochester, New Hampshire, make it to Pompano Beach, Florida? That's a long ways away from our legacy market. And a little scary that our brand is so big up in New England and we have to, we have one tiny store in Pompano Beach. And so a little bit about Aroma Joe's Pompano Beach is um, we Aroma, Pompano Beach was actually the first location in South Florida and I guess let me backtrack and talk about how I'm involved in the Pompano Beach location so how I became involved was I moved down to Florida about eight years ago and wanting to pursue um, health science and I ended up not wanting to do it anymore, but I have a very entrepreneurial background and my family was always passionate about their business. So that's kind of, I knew it was in my family. My father is Tim McKenna, one of the founders. So I, ironically, you know, it's in my blood. Everyone asks, how long have you been a part of Aroma Joe's? And I always say, say that since I was born, I always knew that my family's company was really special and that it was something that could really grow to be something that no one's known to have in North in the Northeast. And so when my father, when I was growing up, I always looked up to my father and always knew that the business itself that they had made so successful, but I kind of wanted to go on my own and do something different, but Aroma Joe's always came back to me, and I always was learning throughout the years on how to run a store. My parents made me, they didn't make me work, but I wanted to work at the age of 14, and so at the age of 16, I became a manager, and I just really loved the concept. I loved being the manager, and so I just slowly started learning about the business, and then when Aroma Joe started franchising, I really jumped on the idea of possibly going to South Florida. Being here about five, when I was here, it was about five years in, and I noticed there wasn't a lot of coffee shops. There was the, you know, we had our competitors here, Dunkin' and Starbucks, but there was nothing unique, and there was no you know, mom and pop shops that also had drive throughs And I knew that it was going to be a really tough market, but if we were to get in at the right time, the profitability of getting an Aroma Joe's in South Florida was, you know, going to be endless. So I then started learning more about how to run the business, how to become a franchisee, and little by little, it, you know, grew me to find a location in Pompano Beach. I didn't know a lot about Pompano Beach, but I've grown to know a lot about it, and it's such a great community. If you're ever in that area, you know, check out Pompano Beach. It's, you know, the people there are nice, the atmosphere, what they're creating, you know, five, ten years down the road is is going to be amazing for small business owners. So, as my journey continued to open the Pompano Roma Joe's, I ended up becoming a franchisee and partnering with my father and my sister. And, you know, being a founding father's daughter, you know a lot about the business, but, you know, going through the franchise course and learning more in depth about the background of a franchise was so beneficial. And it, the corporate side of it, they teach you so much that you really are prepared to run a business. And it's such a great company to be involved in and franchising. And that finally, when we got approved to be franchisees, 
We opened Aroma Joe's in Pompano in April 2018. So as of just last month, we hit our two years and it flew by like crazy. And we are a sit down and drive through coffee shop located on Powerline Road, uh, just north of McNabb. The really cool part about the growth of Aroma Joe's is we are able to reach a lot of population and teach people about franchising. And that led to a second location in Florida, actually one of the founding fathers, Marty. He's always had a passion for Florida as well. So he, but on the West Coast area. So they have been in the process of opening up a Tampa location for a year now and just last March they open. So now we have two Florida Aroma Joes to date open and operating. And that's a huge accomplishment because, you know, back in the day, Aroma Joes from one, from store opening one to store opening two took maybe five years. And now the growth in the company, we can open up stores, you know, five times a year, 10 times a year. So, you know, it's really cool that my idea to open up an Aroma Joes in Florida has no, now grown to this concept that we could really build the market. And Tampa is actually in their second store no negotiation and they are predicting to open in the winter time. So I'm really proud of them and the growth of the Florida market and how Aroma Joe's can, you know, set, we can really be different in the Florida market. And I really believe that the company is going to just boom. And once people hear about us, once people try about, try us, the, the company is just going to just grow so large. So now we're going to get into how coping with COVID-19 has been. Now that you guys have heard me talk about the best coffee company ever, I am going to tell you guys um, how I've been, co how my company has been coping with it since early March and how we've just been one step ahead of everyone. And that's really how it's helped us be as safe as possible. So as you know, the, information came out with COVID, with COVID, our corporate office really has to divide a lot of our stores. So the legacy market is all the stores up in New England and the outside of the legacy markets are the stores like Florida or Pennsylvania or Massachusetts. And so they have really had to dive into each state to see how bad it's been in each market. And unfortunately, Florida has definitely been hit the hardest compared to New England based on how overpopulated we are down here and how not populated they are in the New England states. So luckily, our corporate has been on top of it and prepared. And if, you know, Florida has been, Florida got hit a lot earlier than New England. So, you know, luckily we have been prepared just as much as corporate because we knew that it was going to be tough for us in Florida. So some ways that we've had to cope with COVID is getting a lot of supplies. Because we are in the customer service business, we are dealing with customers all the time. We're dealing with employees all the time. So the biggest, biggest thing is keeping everyone safe and making sure that no matter what, that us, our employees, our customers, everyone feels safe or else small businesses are not going to, um, you know, make it. But fortunately for us, our drive through has been so beneficial. And with that, our supplies have been crucial to be using. So our masks, we all know that masks were the first thing that everyone jumped on. They were months out. You know, so we were really fortunate that being a franchise, we were able to purchase a very large amount of masks. So we, uh, we wear those every shift, every time we talk to a customer, and that is to always keep everyone safe. Our sneeze, sneeze guards is what a lot of businesses you'll see in drive throughs and that's just to protect anyone from coughing, sneezing. Um, gloves, that is a huge, huge aspect to working in the restaurant f 
field because you always want to make sure people are safe and your customers feel safe. Sanitizer, that's been a huge, huge aspect of, of COVID because, you know, that is something that has been very short supply of, but we do use Cisco, so they have helped us immensely on getting a lot of product disinfecting wipes, cleaner, and bleach. These are just some of the supplies that has really helped us cope with managing stress as in we're not as stressed knowing that we have these things because we're always protected. And I would always urge everyone, no matter what, even if you don't have a business, just stock up on these things because you never know when things are going to run out or, you know, just you know, when you want to protect yourself or when you're going to a business. And so, you know, it's funny because before COVID had happened, some of this stuff, you know, you, you think of and you're not, you don't think that it's that important to you, you know, mask, you're like, yeah, it's not going to be that bad, but you know, you always want to be prepared and it really is beneficial to have it on you. And especially in the business, in the restaurant field. So these are just some items that we really, really took seriously. So small businesses dealing with COVID. We've been talking with corporate for two months now, and we've been coming up with strategies, and they have been providing franchisees with so many aspects that can help us during these times and how to deal with crisis and immediately put your marketing hat on or make sure you're up to protocol with health and safety regulations and making sure you're not having this many employees or this many customers inside or, or disinfecting no matter what. So kind of the main aspect of dealing with COVID is also sitting back and realizing what you need to improve on in your business. And in times like this, it's really made you put your marketing hat on and how, how do you reach that target audience that you can't usually reach by going into an office, shaking someone's hand, getting to know them, um, learning what their name is. How, how do we reach that customer that is just driving by to get out of their house or, you know, driving in the plaza to get a piece of pizza and don't realize you're there. So, in the end, it's actually made us rethink a lot of things and how we can market a small business in crisis mode. And in the future, if this ever happens again, we're prepared because we have these marketing strategies. So how I can reach a target audience from home is social media. That's, we all know that we're at home sitting on social media looking at places to eat or looking at things to do, ways to cope with COVID at home. So social media has been a huge influence. Corporate has one really, really amazing thing that Aroma Joe's does is we give back to the community a lot. Um, being in New England, you know, you're a very small knit group of people. And so Aroma Joe's likes to give back to the community a lot. One way we gave back to the community with COVID and social media is we gave away free coffee or free any drink to all healthcare workers for two months. It's still going on, but that has been a huge way that we've outreached through social media is paid marketing or, you know, outreach through Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Twitter and that that also they target each franchise location so what they do is they target out of the five mile radius and they promote on social media to target those people in your area that live that live in the area or that are traveling in that area so that's kind of how we've reached people at home also really awesome things to do on social media is promotions so if you do promotions on social media to kind of help get those customers in to pick up the gift card or the product that kind of gets them out of the house. And it also, you know, we thank them for being customers of ours and then they purchase something. So that's definitely a great way to target, to get that audience to come to you when they're sitting at home. And also a huge way that we've targeted our audience at home is our delivery services. 
So delivery services, we all, like I said, we all know people are sitting at home, they're sick of cooking at home, so they're having DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub delivered to them. We've been on these delivery services since August, so it's been really beneficial that we've known the platform already before this crisis. So we kind of were prepared that these delivery services were just going to blow up, that you know, even if we weren't as busy in the store, that these delivery services are really going to help small businesses. So what corporate did during the dyna- the um, this epidemic is they ended up, we were the only location on these delivery services. So they opened up all delivery services to all franchises. And that has been so beneficial for small businesses because it's an outside um revenue that builds that brings in for the franchisee and people that are sitting at home might have never tried you so that's been awesome that our delivery services have been so great um how we can promote the business for the drive through only so in our community in pompano beach we it's a it's an older generation so we have our cafe is always busy it's always people sit sitting in doing work getting a cup of coffee with friends. So that has been a challenge on how to promote the drive-through and how to bring people in through the drive-through. So one way that we were able to do that is marketing all throughout Powerline Road. So how, what I think is amazing during times like this for small businesses is to get the marketing material out on the road so people can see it. It's the best way that visually people know what's happening, know your hours, know what's open. And that's really helped us. We put about four signs up so that our plaza might look, you know, dead because there's a Planet Fitness in there and people can't go to the gym, but so that people are still driving through and they driving by and they know that we're still open. Uh, What social media tactics can you use to get a larger following during these times? So By that, I mean during, like I said, people are sitting at home on social media, scrolling through things, wondering, you know, what to eat. So other social media tactics that we use were giveaways and promotional items like I spoke about earlier. But one giveaway that we have come up with during times like this is for our customers that are so dedicated, we are giving away gift cards to them to get them out of the house, get them a free cup of coffee, and, you know, it, they just appreciate it so much more, and it's really helped customers to keep coming back and learning more about our business. So one thing that's been tough dealing with COVID is the customers feeling safe coming to us, and I have asked every customer since we've gone through this pandemic is are do you feel safe coming here is is does your family feel safe coming here and 99 percent of our customers feel so safe because we're always wearing a mask we're always sanitizing after they hand us money we are luckily with the drive through you're just farther enough away from your customer that they feel like you're not in your face you know we we have this aroma joe's lean where we lean out make the customer feel comfortable have a conversation with them But during these times, you know, we stand back, we still talk to the customers like always, but you always have to make them feel safe during times like this. So, you know, we've been really fortunate because we were one step ahead of the game to make our customers feel safe. So I would just urge other customers or business owners to talk to your customers, see how they're feeling, see how ways that you can create a better environment so that the customers feel comfortable coming in and it will definitely be beneficial in the end. So how we market on the main road and old school techniques. So old school techniques, what I mean by that is back in the day when we used to market a lot, you know, it was just all by foot, going to the businesses, learning about the people, other businesses, learning about the community, people in the community, other, you know, surrounding areas. Uh, newspapers, online marketing. And so now we've had to 
use a little bit of old school techniques and a little new, new school techniques. The old school techniques, the only kind of thing that we've gone to is the newspapers. So that has been an aspect where we're diving into uh, the summer and we're still, we're going to promote on a newspaper because we feel that at home people are now getting newspapers to their house and they're reading them more and also doing an online um, newspaper as well so people can read both ways but that's an old school technique we're using. Some new school techniques is definitely social media and branding on that and marketing on the road we're doing massive banners any way you can pro promote your business, your community is going to support you because everyone's dealing with this. They, you know, everyone wants to see small businesses succeed. So I would urge everyone to put as much as you can into marketing because that's going to be the best way to promote your business and to get that target audience on that road to turn into you, to try you. Be prepared for for the community to go back to normal. That's also been something we've had to deal with is, you know, some, some days people really want to get out of their house or they're back to work again. So to promote your business on the road and on social media so they know that you're, you're operating in your cafe or your drive-through is just other marketing strategies that I urge other businesses to do as well. Okay. So, some biggest challenges that we've had so far um, are definitely the drive-through only. Like I said, our business is about 70% in the drive-through and 30% in the cafe. So that's 30% of the cafe going into the drive-through as well. So as you can imagine, the line gets very backed up. And during times like this, you have to think about labor and you have to cut back on things but it's been so cool to see the support in the drive-through. But like I said, that is a, it was a challenge and it still is a challenge. So that's something we're just taking day by day. One thing that has really helped us during these times is thinking about the drive-through and thinking if this is the new normal, how can we push that drive-through faster? How can we make customers feel like the line is so fast that they just can stay in it. So we are doing a line busting tablet starting in a couple weeks. And that will be, as you guys probably know, Chick-fil-A is the goddess of getting people in and out of their drive through and so fast with the people outside that are so friendly. So Aroma Joe's has been testing this for a couple years now. They have it in a couple stores that don't have a lot of queuing. But our main goal is to make our customers happy and satisfied. And if that is an extra person outside taking orders, then that has something that we've been able to do during these times. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, making that aspect of the customer's experience better. Safety of staff and customers. So that's all. That was obviously the first and foremost, most important challenge that we had to adapt. And you know, our staff, our staff always feels so safe working here in our environment because it's so clean, and we always make sure everyone feels like they're okay to work because that's the biggest thing. You never want to make anyone feel uncomfortable that you know is under your watch. So. That's been something that's challenging, but we've worked through it and we've done a really good job on that aspect. Uh, throughput. So what that means is now that everyone's at home with their family, they're coming in with their family. So that's lots and lots of food, lots of drinks. So the throughput, you know, has, has been a challenge because you're trying to get everyone out as fast as possible, but that means bigger orders. So ways that we've kind of tried to help that is just putting more employees on and, you know, just trying to make sure that customers, luckily right now during, during times like this, customers aren't probably in a rush to get home, but at the same time, we don't, we want to provide people with that fast service and that experience that they want to come back for more because it was such a great experience and it was so fast. Product availability. So if you've been to restaurants right now or other places where people are low on items, uh, 
you know, it's been tough because vendors didn't prepare for this. No one prepared for it. So a lot of our vendors have, especially Cisco, they don't want to sit on a lot of product. So we've had to, that's been a huge challenge is satisfying our customers and also making sure the vendors can push through the products that you need in your store. Delivery services, that's been a little bit of a challenge just because a lot of people are ordering at a lot of time and we also have to tend to our needs of the drive through So, you know, just learning the aspects of, of all four delivery services that we're on has been a challenge, but we're doing a really good job right now and learning when orders come in and how to process them and how to work the whole operational aspect of the business. Marketing, you know, marketing, like I said, was, is probably our, our biggest um, component of getting to customers right now. And so we've been marketing as much as we can. And hopefully when our cafe opens, we can double our marketing product waste. So when, you know, all this hit, people are working at home now, they're not out, their normal routines are off. So we're trying to adjust the products that we keep in our store so that the waste and your, um, the product waste doesn't increase any more than it was when it, when you had normal hours. Um, customer satisfaction, of course, we always, always want to keep our customers satisfied. And especially in times like this, when every people are getting furloughed or laid off, you always want to make sure that customer is happy. And we're the type of company that will do, do whatever we can to make that customer happy. Um, another challenge I forgot to put on here is hours. So as most of you guys know, a lot of businesses have had to adjust their hours based on you know the community so we've had to reduce our hours from 6 a.m to 7 p.m it's it hasn't been too detrimental to us but you know for everyone's safety to be open that long is you know not what we're doing right now so hopefully in in the next month or so we'll go back to normal hours but that's also been a challenge for us so what does reopening look like? And reopening is just of the cafe. The drive through has always been open, but the reopening of the cafe is going to be a huge challenge because just like any other restaurant, it is going to be scary and tough opening up your doors to all your customers or, you know, 25% of your customers right now. But Customers can still come in and pick up and stand at the six feet uh, social distance, distancing sticker. But it's also nerve wracking to reopen your cafe and, you know, allow customers to come involved with you and your employees. But it's the new norm right now. So we just have to go in it together and learn together and minimize, you know, certain aspects that could create, you know, unsafe, in an unsafe environment. So some things that we've had to do to before Monday um, is minim minimize seating. So if we're only allowed 25% of our um, customers, that is only eight people in our cafe. And that also is outdoor seating as well. Social, social distancing marketing material. So that means always putting marketing material on the floor, making sure everyone's six feet apart and that everyone feels comfortable. Sanitized stations. This has also been a huge challenge because sanitized stations are, don't say that six times, you won't be able to say it. Um, they are two months out. So our, you know, we have to put on our, our sanitized hats and try to find as much sanitizer as possible. So we'll have that all throughout the store. Minimizing customer contact with condiments. So as you guys typically know at coffee shops, you can put in your cream sugar if you want on the side. That we will have to all remove and we will just have to do, you know, everything for the customer that we can to make sure that they're happy and that they leave with what they need. Extra cleaning. This is going to be something that someone's going to have to be watching 24-7 is customers leave, we clean, more customers come in 
customers leave and then more customers come in. So we always have to be on top of who's leaving um, or else we won't be able to sanitize things. Limiting the amount of customers entering the building. So of course we're, we can't allow 50 people to come in and order at a time. So if the line gets too long, they'll have to wait outside until we can rotate people back in. Um, and then customers must wear, wear masks. If we, if we are wearing masks behind the bar, we, we really ask that our customers respect that. And also I believe that our county is making that uh, a law right now. So, and it will just protect everyone in the long run. So Aroma Joe's and Franchising, this is an awesome video. I highly recommend you go to YouTube and just copy and paste this link below because it, it tells the founders are on it, the CEOs on it, and um, another franchise, a couple franchisees are on it, and it just tells you so much about the business that I didn't share today because you know they tell it so much better. But I highly suggest you guys watch it because it you would want to jump into the company right now and become a franchisee. So the CEO was actually on the news not too long ago talking about the growth of Aroma Joe's and he'll talk about it on the YouTube video, but this is also a franchisee right here in the photo. She started working for the company, I believe, when she was 17 years old and um, she's been working for the company for, I'd say, 15 years now and just opened up her first franchise about two, three years ago. So it's really cool to see that the people that have grown up in the company can become franchisees like me as well. And her store is very successful. So there's a lot of growth in the company. So that is me and I'm the franchise of the Pompano location. This is the address to our store and the phone number. I really urge everyone to follow us on our social channels because you know, any support for small businesses right now is crucial and we really appreciate all, all the support and really, really love all the Pompano community, the Fort Lauderdale community, everyone that helps grow our location. And if you need any catering, I am your girl. I deliver to hospitals. I deliver to houses, anything you need, you call that location and either use our delivery services or if it's a big order, I deliver it to you and healthcare workers still get a free drink. Um, what else? I think that's everything about Roma Joe's. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Marissa. That was, that was really great. It was really interesting learning everything about Aroma Joe's and the history and everything you've done prior to the COVID-19 really pandemic hitting and how you've reacted during and looking forward, you know, um, hopefully this has been helpful to everybody. I really appreciate you, you providing all the information and doing this webinar for us. Um, again, my name is Robert Alness. I'm the Director of Philanthropy with the Broward Public Library Foundation. Marissa made an awesome pitch at the beginning of the video to come and learn more about Meta Broward. I encourage you to do so. You can go to our website, bplfoundation.com, and you'll see a ways to get involved. There's Meta Broward there. Feel free to email me for information or just check out uh, what we have going on. Um, uh, social media right now, we're doing the reading challenge. So we're recording short videos of ourselves, uh, reading a kid's book and then tagging some friends in it. And we're just trying to create uh, fun things for kids to be able to do from home and to engage families right now that's of all, all around reading and literacy. Um, so. So we're very excited about that. Uh, today is uh, Wednesday, um, May 13th. It, we're hoping to get this up tomorrow, but um, we will be also hosting a virtual happy hour. Uh, we've called it Around the World in 45 Minutes. Um, so if you see this after the event, keep an eye out because I think we'll probably be doing more of them. Uh, we're really excited. We're going to host it on Zoom. Everyone's going to bring virtual backgrounds of places around the world so we can talk about them. Um, you know, we'll do, do little breakout sessions for networking. So it's not just, you know, 50 people on one video, but it's going to be very, very cool stuff. So we are staying active. We're looking to stay, you know, uh, here in the community and provide information that's useful as well as, um, you know, engaging programming that brings people together still and in support of the libraries and of course, literacy. 
So, you know, thank you all very much. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you again, Marissa. And we'll see you all you know, next week at the next video.